All right. The bread and butter of the game is getting to say that beautiful word, checkmate. Getting to there, there's a step in between. It's called check. That is where you have put in the enemy king, we'll pretend this is the enemy king, into a situation where if you do not change it, he can be captured. So we're gonna use a rook and a queen to do the dirty work here. At the moment, this king is not being threatened by either one of these pieces. They cannot get him from where they are at. However, if we put this queen here, now the queen has a direct line to this king. This king is now in check. On a turn that you put a piece so that the king is be your opponent's king is being threatened by one of your pieces, you would announce check. Your opponent can do nothing other than try and protect their king, regardless of what their plans were. Check is a wonderful way to protect your own pieces. Say you have your queen is being threatened by, say, their knight or a pawn or whatever. If you put their king in check, they have to protect him. That being said, they can move the king out of the way. They can put a piece in the way. If, say, he had a rook here. Two options. We can move the king. If we move him there, he's safe. Queen can't get him. Rook can't get him. However, if you go here, there's two problems with that. One, now he's in line with the rook. He's also not moved out of the line of fire from the queen. Here is a bad place because it's still in line with the rook, out of the way of the queen, though. Here would be safe. No one can get him. Here would be safe. No one can get him. Here would be safe. The other avenue, like I said, which proved time we had that rook there, the queen is the only thing threatening him. If you do that, now the queen can only get the rook, and your king is protected. Now granted, that rook might have been in line to get something else, but again, the whole point is protecting your king, and you have to. It's in the rules. All right, for checkmate, the white king here is our intended victim. Checkmate occurs when you cannot get out of check. So, again, we'll go with these guys. If he's there and he is there, he has avenues of escape. If you're in a situation, however, say we'll put him here, by the way, corner is very bad for kings. They only have three spaces they can go to. Very dangerous. And we do something like that. That king's in trouble. He can't go there. He can't go there. Because the queen threatens both. He also cannot take the queen, which that is an avenue sometimes. However, he's now still in line with that rook. This king, assuming there are no other pieces here to protect him, because if you could take the queen, he'd be safe. He cannot escape from this check, and therefore is in checkmate, and the black player would win. Now granted, there are lots of scenarios where this happens. It very rarely is a single piece. It is a lot, normally something like this, where one piece is now here and being protected, and the king cannot escape. Nor, if you take the piece, the king can also threaten by something else. Checkmate is the beautiful part of this game. There's multiple ways to do it. I'll demonstrate a few. Here's another example of a checkmate. We have a knight, which can move like such, is threatening the king. And if he were to go here, this rook is in line. Same with this, same row. And if he were to go here, this bishop has him. Now generally, like I said, corners are bad for kings, so they're good for examples. The situation is very rare that you'll be left with just your king. This is just for a really demonstrative. Normally in the middle of the board, you will have stuff in the way. I'll set one of those up in a bit, but here is a, another multiple piece setup. Uh, frankly, it is almost impossible to put a king into check with a single piece because if he's close enough to cover all the things, the king probably just take him. So you're most likely going to need at least two pieces in on the action. Now we have something a little more akin to a later part of the game. Uh, we have a bunch of pieces missing, there's stuff all over the board, but the important thing is where the king is in relation to the fact that he is in check. We'll pretend that this bishop was moved from here to here, putting this king in check. Uh, because of how he's in check, he is actually in a checkmate, because he cannot escape from this square. The bishop has this whole line covered, so here and here are out. If he were to move to here, this knight can get him. 
if you were to go here, the queen has this line covered, so here and here are out. And if we were to try to retreat back to either of these squares, this rook has this line covered. Technically, the only space that he would be safe would be here. Unfortunately, there is a pawn in the way. This is where some of the placement of your own pieces needs to come into play. You need to be careful that you don't inadvertently trap yourself with your own pieces. You can't take them, you can't go around them, and sometimes they can cost you the game because you left a pawn in the way. That, again, works to your advantage in moving around your opponent's pieces. This king back here, for instance, could only go here, here, or here because there are two pieces blocking it. If there were a... do a little magic there and get a rook over there, he can only escape to this space, which if that were threatened, he would be in checkmate because he's trapped by his own men. Just a thing to keep in mind. While the checkmate is the most standard way a game ends, there are a few ways that a game can end not in a checkmate. A game can actually end in a draw. There's a handful of scenarios in which this occurs. One of them is simply both players agree that they are bored and want to move on and agree to end in a draw. Some games can drag on long, and if you were keeping score, if you both decide to end a game, that counts as a draw. The more common one would be what is called a stalemate. A stalemate is a handful of scenarios. The most common one would be if you are down to uh, normally a few pieces and a player cannot make their move. Generally, this happens when you are down to just your king, or your king and perhaps one or two pawns, and you find yourself in a situation. If it is white's player's turn, it is stalemate. He is not in check. This queen can only get there. The king can only capture here. However, he can't move, because this puts him in check, that puts him in check, 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 check. So he cannot move the game ends in a draw. This is more so for tournament play, where stats are recorded and the like, but it can happen in casual play as well. Doesn't matter what else he would have on the board, because he would, well, if he could move something else, then yes, that actually would keep him out of it. But in this scenario, he can't move. He has no move. His turn never can happen. That's a stalemate. The other scenario, say she's not there and you're down to just your kings. It can happen. Neither one of these pieces can get close enough to put the other in check because they put themselves in check. If at any point you both only have your kings, it's a draw because this is as close as they can ever get to one another. They can make faces and fling insults, but they can't actually get to one another. So that would be a stalemate as well. The much more unlikely one is the 50 turn stalemate. That sounds daunting, I'm sure. If 50 turns go by and nothing is captured, a player can declare 50 turn stalemate. Again, really only comes up in tournament play when there's ridiculousness going on usually, but it's in the official rules, so I'm including it. Also, if you end up getting stuck in a loop where, say, uh, one player can only move one piece because it puts his guy in check, but he can move it to one other space, but that doesn't put him in check, and they just go back and forth, you can you can uh, do a three-turn repetitive draw. Again, normally it like happens in tournaments. The reason for both of those is the fact that they put in those rules so that you couldn't win through a war of attrition and just waiting for your opponent to get tired enough to make a bad move. So they put in an actual time limit to that regard. The other avenue at which a game could end in a loss is if you were playing a standard variant of chess, which is called timed chess. That would be anytime you see the movies where there's a little thing normally sitting off to the side of the board, guy makes a move, hits a little button. Other guy makes a move, hits a button. What that is, is a timer. On either side of it are two different clocks, generally set to 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes worth of turns. If you run out of time, you lose, therefore, giving the game sort of a time limit. The game can't possibly take more than an hour. Therefore, you have to move efficiently, as it were. You can take as long as you want on a turn in standard chess, but if you're playing time chess, the clock's ticking. Even if you have the advantage, maybe they're down to just their king, you have more than half your pieces. If you run out of time, you still lose. Again, that's normally for tournament play and higher end stuff, but it's out there for if you want to pursue it. All right, so I went and set up a traditional setup with the white on one side, black on the other. Uh, I wanted to go over a few rules that don't pertain to any specific pieces, but are important rules nonetheless. The black side always goes first. Now, granted, there is nothing that determines who is the black player, so flip a coin. Barring that, 
Uh, the turn sequence is you move a piece, that's your turn. Other player gets to take a turn, so on and so forth. So, black player goes first, white player goes, black player goes, knights leaping over pieces. Now, as far as what exactly ends your turn is letting go of your piece. So, if I didn't like that, I let go. My turn's over, it's now the black player's turn. If, however, so the black player gets to move, say he goes there. As long as he doesn't let go of the piece, he can stay like this indefinitely and really kind of analyze where his piece ends up. And if he doesn't like it, he can put it back and do something completely different. But the second he lets go, turns over. Now in a more friendly game, you know, people are kinder, but you know, tournaments, you let go of the piece, you're done. Now, an important thing that comes up there is if you realize you've let go of a piece and you've done a dumb move, try not to blurt out, ah oh, crap, that was dumb. As that will tip off your opponent, you've probably just done something dumb and you're about to lose a piece. Because chances are they might not notice it and you might get to save your piece and move it next turn. So, Poker Face applies to chess as well. My name is Jim. I'm a chess nerd. Hopefully you enjoyed my basics on chess. Uh, go out there and kick your friends' butts in the mental arena. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys next week on General Nerdery.